Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the Arosomo DNA results, predicted phenotype trades, GG match results, uh, and ethnicity of a catacomb culture individual, a female from the North Caucasus from right here in Russia, from Stavropolsky Krai in Russia. Now in case you don't know about the catacomb culture, catacomb culture individuals were essentially a mixture of uh, the Eastern and the Caucasian hunter-gatherers, and they resembled uh, other various Indo-Europeans in Russia, such as the Yamnaya, uh, Hvalinsk, uh, Repin, and uh, various un other uh, steppe herders, various other Western steppe herders in Russia. Uh, catacomb culture is ancestral to uh, uh, various Indo-Europeans in Europe, uh, such as corded ware and bell beakers. This uh, female, this, this woman carries mitochondrial lineage W1, but what's interesting about this uh, this woman, this female, KBD002, is that she's a little bit of an outlier. She doesn't cluster with the rest of the catacomb culture individuals. What I mean by that is she's a lot more CHG, she's a lot more Caucasus, she's a lot more Southern, and she doesn't have all that much Eastern hunter-gatherer admixture. She's very Southern, she's not very, um, not very EHG, and you can see that with her results. Uh, by looking at her results with Eurogenes K13, for example, with Eurogenes K13, the closest populations to her are actually all of the populations of the Caucasus and West Asia. For example, the closest group to her are Tabasarans, followed by Chechens, followed by Lesgians, followed by Tajiks, followed by Kabardin. So all the closest modern populations to her are various groups of Caucasus in West Asia. Tabasaran, Chechen, Lesgian, Tajik, Kabardin, Kumik, Nagai, Pashtun, Asitin, and Balkar. All the top 10 closest modern populations to her are groups of Western Asia and not Europeans. Although, nonetheless, she is scoring 28% Baltic and 10% and 20% North Atlantic. She is still scoring quite a lot of Northern European components. Um, despite scoring quite a lot of Northern European components, she is still relative to the rest of the Yamne and um, catacomb culture individuals, relative to. to typical, I guess, relative to typical catacomb culture people, she is a little bit more southern. So, uh, in terms of her, I guess, more deeper ancient admixtures, uh, when it comes to typical Yamna or catacomb culture people, they are 50% EHG, 50% CHG, so 50% Eastern hunter-gatherer, 50% Caucasus hunter-gatherer. When it comes to her and her admixtures, in her case, it is more like 60 or 70% CHG or 70% Caucasus, and only 30% Eastern European hunter-gatherers. So she is a lot more Caucasus and a lot, a lot more um, a lot more Southern, a lot more um, uh, a lot more Mediterranean, you could say, a lot, a lot more Southern affinities. She has a lot more Southern affinities in her genetics. Let's look at what she scores with my own of the city calculator, with my trade predictor. This will be not as interesting. So here she's actually closest to Russians. Uh, Russians come at first place, followed by that as Slavs from Himera. Uh, everything following that is not as interesting. And she's getting one of those a mixture of Russians plus Slavs or funnel beakers plus uh, funnel beakers once again plus Slavs or Russians plus Russians or Slavs plus bell beakers. There is a very interesting model Turkic plus Russians or there's Turkish plus Bailulilai from Lithuania, which I think is Probably the closest to reality out of all of these models, Turkish plus Bailulilai, but that comes at at tenth place uh, in the two way in the two way uh, admixture oracle. So I guess uh, with 448 SNPs, the closest the closest um, to reality model is this is this model, which is a uh, tenth in the oracle, Turkish plus Bailulilai from Lithuania. I think this is the most realistic model out of all of these. So, okay, now let's go ahead and see what she scores for Nasha Code Calculator results, what, what she looks like. I think this might be quite interesting, what phenotype this Western step herder woman looks like. So, it looks like she's got brown eye color, 73% likelihood of that. She's got quite dark eye color, 22.6% uh, likelihood of darkest brown eyes. Definitely doesn't have blue eyes, no, no uh, likelihood of that at all. Uh, looks like she's got dark brown or black hair. Absolutely no likelihood of any um, hair color lighter than than dark brown. 
uh, red hair zero, light brown zero, light blonde or dark blonde zero. Um, essentially, her only possible hair colors are dark brown or black. For skin color, looks like she's got light brown or or Mediterranean skin tone. And for hair texture, looks like most likely she has curly or wavy hair, but straight or even kinky is possible as well, which is quite interesting. Um, looks like she does not have BH3 or 2 or 1 or 4, does not have any of the blue eye haplotypes, and she does not have any of the ginger, ginger hair variants in MC1R. Quite interesting. Let's see the phenotype oracle, what phenotypes she resembles the most. So the closest phenotypes to her is this, followed by this, which is very, very exotic. I think um, she might be scoring some, she might have some East Asian variants in the EDAR if she's scoring this for the second closest phenotype, followed by this. And the phenotype mixtures, yeah, I'm seeing some American Indian in the phenotype mixtures. She's, she's getting modeled as a mixture of American Indian plus Mediterranean or once again, Mediterranean plus American Indian, or once again, American Indian plus Mediterranean. So I'm thinking there's there must be some... Uh, let's look it up, actually. We can look it up right now. Yes, so she has... Um, in this variation of EDAR, she has typical European genotype. But in this variation of EDAR, she has a non-European genotype. And in this variation of EDAR, once again, she has some uh, likely East Asian facial traits. So once again, when it comes to... When it comes to these variations for EDAR, she has non-European genotypes. So, um, when it comes to these, the phenotype morphology oracle, uh, this actually takes into account, like it, it is directly, it is directly influenced by these calls, by these SNPs. It is based on SNP calls, not on ethnicity. All right, let's see what she scores for the biomarkers panel. It looks like she's got a predisposition to lower than average levels of vitamin D, pretty typical. Uh, below average levels of LDL cholesterol, actually above average, which is pretty good. Uh, not not that good, actually. It's kind of kind of bad. You don't want to have above average levels of LDL cholesterol. Below average levels of HDL, which is kind of bad. Um, below average levels of glucose, which is good. Below average levels of hemoglobin, which is kind of rare. I don't see that commonly. Uh, pretty much average blood pressure, pretty good. Uh, pretty much average level of iron in blood, pretty good. Pretty much average level of sex core binding globulin, pretty good. Pretty much average level of red blood cell count. And above average number of base pairs for telomere length, which is pretty good once again. So it looks like she's pretty exposed to a longer lifespan. Pretty good stuff. Uh, let's see the polygenic risk scores. So it looks like she's pretty exposed to much lower odds of cataracts, which is really good. This is something I added recently. So like if you bought my uh, tool on itch, you're not going to see this panel. Uh, looks like she's got much lower than average odds of uh, AMD. Uh, she's got a above average odds of rheumatoid arthritis. She's got average odds of Tourette's, uh, above average odds of epilepsy, average odds of asthma, below average odds of leukemia, average odds of vitiligo, above average odds of myopia, above average odds of primary biliary cirrhosis, average odds of stroke, average odds of male pattern hair loss, average odds of atrial fibrillation, average odds of deep vein thrombosis, very low odds of bipolar type 1. Very low odds of schizophrenia. Slightly below average odds of type 2 diabetes. Very high odds of type 1 diabetes. Wow. So that's interesting. So she's got definitely a strong predisposition to type 1 diabetes. She's got a very low odds for Alzheimer's. Pretty low odds for multiple sclerosis. She's got one risk variance for breast cancer out of 6. Quite typical. She's got two risk variance for testicular cancer out of 14. And they are in the important variation here in KETOG. So... Um, I guess that's quite bad. For celiac disease section, she's got two risk variants for celiac disease out of 10. Quite typical. She's got no risk variants for GSS. She's got five risk variants for Crohn's out of 20. Quite typical. She's got zero risk variants for Reifenstein's. No risk variants for Parkinson's. Six, three risk variants for Gilbert syndrome. Quite typical. Uh, no risk variants for basal cell carcinoma. No risk variants for GCD. And no risk variants for Vardenburg syndrome. Really, really typical stuff. All right, so the only thing we really have to wor worry about is the genotype for type 1, the risk score for type 1 diabetes. That was really interesting. Uh, okay. Okay, quite cool. Uh, let's see the monogenic trait stuff. 
Looks like she's got warrior, warrior genotype in Compt and also warrior genotype in MAOA, so definitely quite a warrior overall. Uh, slower breakdown of dopamine, therefore higher dopamine levels and adva advantages in attention and motivation tasks. Disadvantages in stress resiliency. Looks like she's got intermediate number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. Uh, looks like she's got um, no genotype for 5-HTC LPR. That's unfortunate. I can't talk about that. Looks like she's got high rods of autism. Definitely a predisposition to high rods of autism. Uh, looks like she's got a rare genotype associated with longer sleep duration, which is quite cool. I almost missed that. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. What, what else can I talk about here? Uh, when it comes to multiple sclerosis, she does not have any risk variance for multiple sclerosis in the HLA, which is really good to see. For um, cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like she has a predisposition to higher or intermediate odds of cardiovascular issues, which is kind of unfortunate, I guess. For, okay, for vitiligo, she does have risk variance for vitiligo in HLA. So I guess for for the HLA panel, we might see intermediate odds for for uh, risk for for issues, intermediate or maybe even higher. I'm not sure, but I'm expecting intermediate for HLA risk variance. No micropenis, really good to see. Better performing muscles like a sprinter rather than endurance uh, endurance athlete. But then we see one variant for increased pain sensitivity, pain sensitivity in SC and 9A. Uh, we see. Okay, hold on. Normal or slower metabolism of caffeine. Um, for alcoholism panel, she's got pretty much spot on average risk of alcoholism. For rare diseases and traits panel, looks like she's got this genotype, which greatly increases the risk of ankylosing spondylitis. And she doesn't really have any uh, risk variance for anything else. She's a carrier of, of one pseudo, I can't even pronounce this. Uh, let's look it up. What does this imply? Is this rare? And what does this imply? Yes, it is rare. It is rare. But essentially, it doesn't... Uh, leukodystrophy. Okay, so so leukodystrophy is the, is the issue that this causes. It's a, it's a dystrophy of, of, um, of the brain. That's, that's what this implies. Now I understand. Okay. Um, uh, so higher odds of boldness. What was what was she scoring for boldness? By the way, let's let's remember. I don't remember. Let's find that again. Uh, hair loss. She was scoring average for hair loss. Okay, average for hair loss. Let's scroll back down. Um, androgen receptor typical odds for hair loss. Um, HIV and AIDS panel. She's got two protective variants here, which leads to ninety percent reduction in HIV viral load. Definitely really good to see. Also, she might be... Yes, I was predicting that she would have intermediate odds of autoimmune disease based on her genotype in HLA, and I was right. She does indeed have intermediate odds for autoimmune disease. It is really, in reality, it's slightly higher than intermediate. It's slightly higher. Uh, typical score would be scoring lower, but... Uh, it's typical score, but intermediate is really slightly higher. Uh, if you're scoring highest, that's that's a, that's a problem. That's a concern. Uh, for muscular dystrophy myopathy, she's scoring no risk variance for that. Really good to see. Color blindness panel. She actually has two risk variants in OPN1 as W for color blindness. Definitely very interesting. Uh, for FTO gene panel, she does not carry. She is heterozygous for these two variations. So she does have some risk variance for obesity in FTO. For syncope, based on 1 SNP, she's essentially got slightly above average risk of syncope. For biotraits panel, she's got CC here, which leads to higher odds of insulin, insulin resistance if severely severely overweight, uh, less IL-6. She's got two copies of the CLTCL1 gene variant, which leads to a selective advantage in processing carbohydrate-rich diets. Um, we don't really want to go over this because we already saw the polygenic risk score for this. For vitamins and levels, we don't really want to go over this because we already saw the polygenic risk score for this. But for the blood group panel, what's very interesting is she, her blood type is type A. And that's very uncommon. Um, well, it's not very uncommon. It's just a little bit uncommon. The most typical blood type is type O. And I definitely like seeing uh, unusual results where the blood type is anything other than type O. So in this case, definitely type A blood type. 
Uh, there is no doubt about it. Um, very, very spot on type A. Very interesting. Very interesting result. So type A blood type. There can be no questions about this result. They're very definite. Well, thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the uh, the content. I hope you um, I hope you had a good day. Hope you had a good uh, time watching my video. And also, I hope you buy my tool, which the link to buy my tool will be in the description of the video. You can generate a report like this for your own file, for any file that you that you want to to any micro array sequence format file that you have. You can generate a report like this. And it will actually be a lot better because this is quite a low quality file. So the report that you generate will be usually a little bit better than this. Um, it, um, I mean, it only costs thirteen dollars so far. It will be a lot, a lot more expensive as time goes on. Uh, on May twenty second, I will be releasing a big, big update on on itch where I'm selling my my tool, and uh, with that update, I will also be updating the price. And the price will be much bigger following May 22nd. So, you know, maybe buy while, while it's so cheap is my advice to you. But anyway, thanks for watching. Maybe leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, share and comment and uh, goodbye.